We still have our guest in the studio talking entertainment this time and his role in it, especially across Nigeria and beyond, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about what a lot of people don't know. Okay. Your history with Magic Fashion. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's part of the untold story that his manager says he's going to tell and going to set up special interviews for, but I can let the cat out of the bag a little bit. Um, uh, what people did not know is I was responsible for launching Magic for Shek. Um, Magic for Shek um, was in London uh, in Tabanzi's house, Prince Tabanzi, uh, God bless his soul. And um, he it was just there in the house as a houseboy and helping out, etc. And one night I just finished a meeting with the Banzi. And as I was leaving, he said, please, please, sir, I'd like you to listen to my music. Um, because at that time, you know, I was very well connected in the business. I used to manage Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Yes, I, yes. I, That's, I mean, so much to talk about. We can't even I, begin to. I used to. to write for Hot Chocolate, right, as a writer. Their last album, Love Shot, I have two songs on it. And... Um, I said, okay, fine, no problem. I took, they gave me a little cassette and I got home. I put on my usual hot chocolate that I like to drink <laughs> in the night. And uh, as I put it on, I put the tape on. I was in a Taking state a of back. shock. Yeah, I said, clarity, tonality, sweet voice, music sounded very good. And I picked up the phone and I called the band. It was about one in the morning. I left his house about 12.30 in North London where he lived in Wood Green. And I was going to Brixton, South London. Of course, that hour of the night, I speed through the lights. And I got there in 30 minutes. I was home about one o'clock and put on my hot chocolate and started this. And then I called him about five past, 10 past one. I said, Prince, you've got a star on your hands. He said, what do you mean? I said, this boy, at that time, he had Felix Liberty, Chris Okoti, Eva Adney, and others that he was promoting. I said, this boy is a gold mine. I said, no, he's not even a gold mine. He's a diamond mine. This guy is going to bring you a lot of money. I said, you mean? I said, look, I'm coming back there tomorrow morning. Get the funds ready. Take this guy to the studio. I'm going to go with him to the studio. And Amazing. Get and... and he went. You were right, very I, right. He's one of the musical treasures well, in this he country. Went, he went back to, uh, he went to the studio and that was the other shock I got. Magic was playing all the instruments, both guitar, drum, percussion. I said, what kind of talent is this? And he, he then completed his album over the time, Send on the Ring. When he was leaving, I gave him a gift. I gave him a hundred pounds at Gatwick Airport and I gave him one of my guitars. I had a 12-string ovation, electric, and a 12-string ovation, acoustic. I gave him the electric guitar. And I said, from one artist to the other, go it's and do well. Gift to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, a lot of persons don't know. I didn't even know that until yeah. I read a bit. Um, okay, let, aside from that, you've done a whole lot more. You were also part of uh, the... Calabar Carnival, that is now almost a global phenomenon. Yes. Are you happy with your participation? Well, my participation was was very, I would say, instrumental in one area, and that was to bring Donald Duke to Trinidad. Having brought him to Trinidad around carnival time and <clears throat> showed him what carnival was all about, he got excited and then started to interact with the people who were making carnival in Trinidad, and that is the the bandsmen, the costume makers, etc., and brought them over to um, to Calabar, and that's the beginning and the start of Calabar Carnival. So that was my role, yeah. uh, you know. In having brought, I brought him Lockie Benidian, of course, uh, uh, President Obasanjo, and others, because what I was doing is trying to foster South-South relationship between the Caribbean and mm -hmm. me having both cultures as part of my persona. Okay, yeah, um, we're time pressed now. So I must ask you, though, you've had quite a number of awards to your uh, name. Could you tell us about your favorites? I think the recognition that I got from uh, CBAC, Festac, 40 years, um, as one of the pillars of Festac, to me that was the most important. Um, uh, they gave Obasanjo, uh, President Obasanjo, they gave uh, Wole Sheyinka, uh, they gave Sir Victor Waifo, and they gave myself to be in there 
among those super greats was for me a, a final recognition of um, my contribution and um, Festac being the culmination of all the uh, cultures of the African diaspora and to be represented by that and to be made a pillar of Africa. What else do you want? Congratulations <laughs> are always in order. Congratulations again. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, let's look quickly your thoughts uh, as a concluding part of this conversation. Your, your thoughts about the Nigerian project. There's been a lot of conversation about restructuring. You've been around the world. You've seen how other cultures you know, operate, how other politics um, play out, and what we have here in Nigeria. What are your thoughts about the future of this country? Uh, the, future, <coughs> the future rests with, I think, one of the um, areas that I've talked about early on in my organization, Africa C and Africans doing it for themselves by themselves. I don't think we need to borrow um, in, you know, uh, what I call inbuilt infrastructures from the UK, the US, etc., and use that. We are borrowing things that are not relevant to us. You know, democracy. What is democracy? What is Africacy is more important. You know, how do we build our own political base? and our own unique way of ruling ourselves. Why are we borrowing from other countries, you know, the way they rule themselves? And we have made a mishap of theirs. You know, it has not worked. The fact of the matter is that it has not worked in most of these countries. We are only, you know, we are like adopted sons and daughters of these. We need other, to find our own. Our own, our own is Africacy. Concentrate on the Afrocentric Renaissance, the Afrocentric aspect of our lives. What make us tick? What has governed us over all those periods of time before those things came? How did we live? How did we run our cultures? How did we run ourselves? Go back to that. Chiefs, kings, you know, uh, respect for elders, making sure elders are inclu inclusive, taking care of the young, one village growing a family, you know, oh, hey, those are the things that uh, made us what we were I certainly and what hope we are. people listen to uh, this words of wisdom. Thank you very much uh, for coming on the program today. It's been a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you. Because that's where we wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. Well, if you did, tune in again for more of such conversations here on PLOS TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Until next time, be well. Thank you.